Alive investigates race and infant mortality. Every day across the country, an infant dies of a mysterious disease called neck. It attacks the intestines of premature babies. And now a study spearheaded by researchers here in Atlanta has found black babies are nearly three times more likely to die of that disease. As 11 Alive investigator Savannah Levins reports, there is now a nationwide move to understand why. Um, this picture, I believe he um, had gotten closed up. It's been 10 years since Kim Seabrooks gave birth to twins Jonas and Josiah at 32 weeks. Third day of life, we got a phone call, said, hey, you guys need to get down here. It was the first time Kim heard the words necrotizing enterocolitis or neck. The disease had its claws around little Jonas. When the surgeon came back, he told us, you know, this is an intestinal infection, his gut got some type of bacteria in it, it caused it to die. He told both my husband at that time, you know, there was a 50% chance of survival. Grim words that even a decade can't soften. <laughs> you know, always question, you know, what could have we done different? While Jonas was in surgery, she learned premature babies that are exclusively fed breast milk are 138% less likely to contract neck. This, of course, was after they'd already started Jonas on formula. When they told me, you know, we're going to have to supplement, you know, I didn't think, think twice about it. You know, I assumed everything would be safe. Just last month in a landmark case, an Illinois jury found formula company Mead Johnson liable for not better warning of the risk of neck, awarding the plaintiff family $60 million, 35 more than they were even asking for. It sets a national precedent for hundreds of other similar lawsuits currently pending, including several in Georgia. And it comes on the heels of new research that black babies are much more likely to die of neck than white infants. Okay, so he's having some good bowel movements every day. OBGYN Jocelyn Slaughter isn't surprised by the findings. Black people in general, there are just overall, in almost every aspect of medicine, we just get the shorter end of the stick. She says lower rates of insured patients, medical mistrust, pressure to work until birth, cultural attitudes towards breastfeeding, and gaps in awareness could all be contributing factors. Nick, this is something that most women and parents and lay people have no clue what it is. And she says it's no coincidence hospitals that serve majority black communities generally have less access to donor breast milk, which is expensive and in short supply. Those breast banks aren't there. I honestly believe because I did have, you know, some breast milk I was able to give my Jonas is the reason why he's still with us today. I was um, so happy that I um, survived. Jonas, now 10, still has a long road ahead. Um, finger pokes, IVs, blood transfusion. His struggle no clearer than when he's next to his twin, Josiah. And I tell him, you know, you have to remember that, um, you know, you're half the size of your brother, okay? But you've got a big heart, and God has you here for a reason. And that reason is to give hope to other mothers, to give hope to other children. And we are glad that Jonas is with us tonight as well. Piedmont Healthcare recently started using only human milk in its NICU. Since then, it reports a 77% decline in neck cases. Tonight, there is also a push to create the state of Georgia's first ever breast milk bank. For more information on that or how you can tap into donations, text the words breast milk to the number here on your screen, 404-885-7600. We will send you that link straight to your phone.